Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Fassel. Welcome to my solo automaton hell dive. I'm making this video to improve my gameplay. I hope you enjoy learning with me. Please feel free to like or dislike the video so I know how you feel about the content. I get lucky on the mission layout. Starting from the east, I can run a circle clockwise around the map to get everything, so that's awesome. I probably need to start by admitting I'm a huge auto cannon fan. I just feel it's a jack of all trades, and in my opinion the best one. I know people are loving the Quasar Cannon, but I just don't feel it holds a candle to the Auto Cannon. Let me know if you are an Auto Cannon or Quasar player in the comment section below, I'd say. The 500kg is good for objective clearing, and the Cluster Bomb basically annihilates everything but big boys. I love the airstrike, but I went with the laser here because I was feeling lazy. Chucking a laser into objectives or fabricators to let it work its magic is freaking sweet. The stamina booster makes it so I can run around the map at good pace. Soloing does mean you have to cover a lot more ground, so I basically always run the sprint booster solo. I'm using a 550 speed explosive resistant armor because rockets scare the crap out of me. I absolutely love the diligence and redeemer, and the stun grenades are my answer to the big boys after the clusters are done. This is a voiceover, but if you want to see me live, let me know. I'll post my streaming schedule in the description below, in case you enjoy the video. I'm an optimistic guy, I'm a big fan of the you can't grow without failing mentality, so I hope you enjoy that vibe. Hey, free fabricator. And time to run. Yeah, crap. It's an anti air, so no eagles. And those are devastators, so I definitely need my auto cannon. I tap my minimap like nuts so I know what's coming and where from. Getting flanked is instant death, basically. Okay, I definitely can't fight a dropship right now. So laser time, baby. I don't know if it's worth it though. Minimap didn't really show me how much was in there. Ah, whatever. Firing orbital laser. All right, send me my actual gun, please. I really hope my laser gets the anti-air emplacement. But there's a good chance the dropship fodder is soaking it. Alright, let's see how this rogue station looks. It looks going chippy. Great. So, three sub objectives and no eagles. And back we go. My aim is terrible right now. I really need my eagles. And gunship shoots me itself. Nice. I threw that resupply so far out of bounds without noticing. Oh boy. This run is going so well right now. I really want to practice my third person view auto kind of name, but I swear I'm never going to hit this gunship. There we go. Stims. Learning moment number one. Don't zigzag too fast or you run back into a bullet. Should have just gone for cover. I was curious if I could take out that gunship with my drop pod. I don't think I hit an engine though, so who knows. Landing those shots felt good. Don't have the best aim on the planet, so I'll take it. Getting better. Alright, alright. Alright, nothing here. Give me my eagles, damn it. If you're struggling using the minimap to check your surroundings, by the way, just practice. It really does make perfect. I used to need a lot more time to observe it as well. The practice pays off. You got this. Fun fact, an auto cannon takes out anti-air turrets and mortars with 4 shots, and you don't have to hit the vents slash weak spots either. For hulks, tanks, and tower turrets, you need 3 shots to the vents though. Alright, this place looks jam-packed, so I'm super happy I brought my 500s. So the question is, do I get nailed to this rock if I move forward a bit more? I enjoy the running gun playstyle, so I don't feel like stealthing too much right now. I don't think those apples in there are worth the time I'd have to spend fighting the bots, so I'm moving. The hawks also die with two auto cannon bullets to the eye, by the way. If 
actually notice the crouch sliding or diving right before I shoot anything. That's for aim stabilization purposes, of course. It also helps dodging random bullets and rockets when things get hectic. And it looks sick, am I right? Yay for stun grenades. Those shots were dope and lucky. My aim is normally not that stable. Sweet. Free fabricator because I brought an auto cannon. My positioning here is really bad because I'm getting flanked from the east. I should have moved forward towards this fabricator. Almost got stabbed because of bad positioning there. Never mind. Learning moment number two. Don't stop checking your minimap to make sure you don't get stabbed. Or cannoned so you don't drop your eagle. Okay, that's a lot of dudes. Yeah, I'll skip the full clear. When fighting bots, hug rocks. Thank me later. I need to get to that objective, but I want the things north of me to despawn first. If dropship enemies lose track of you, they just disappear, so that's always a good strat. So I'm running south. Unfortunately, easier said than done. Apparently, everything's dead. Fun fact number two. When you zoom in your gun, you basically drag the floating circle to the middle. So technically, you can use the white dot in the middle of your screen to aim. You just have to pull the trigger about half a second after you zoom in. And it only works for the first bullet, of course. Pretty proud I cluster bombed here. I don't see them, but I saw my minimap, so I knew they were incoming. I just threw it in the right direction. The kill count at the bottom of your screen is definitely not always accurate, by the way. I want this gunship fabricator before I go for the objective. They are way too annoying. Just like a stalker nest, I feel you should prioritize these things always. Unlike a stalker nest, this thing takes a hell bomb though which can make these things extremely hectic sometimes. Whenever there's a wall around it like this, I always try to get in the crevice, makes it so the gunships have a hard time shooting the hell bomb. Fun fact number three, the control panel for the hell bomb appears in the direction you threw it. So if you threw it north, the panel will be north. Used to your advantage, I'd say. There was a turret there, but I don't think it saw me. And wrong I am. Gotta get lucky sometimes, I guess. Fun fact number four, for those new to shooter games, one of the best tips you'll ever get is about good peeking. By hugging the rock and slowly creeping to the right here, I only have to worry about what I can see. Because if I can't see them, then they can't see me. Which basically makes a 10 on 1 feel like 10 different 1 on 1s, which is much easier. I'm capped on the amount of samples I can have, but I try to grab them in case a friend joins the mission. Being kind to others is a strength, boys, not a weakness. I'm an intensive care unit nurse, so fun fact number 5, I guess. When you're kind to others, your body produces oxytocin, which reduces cortisol, better known as stress. So being kind to others reduces your stress? If you see a big red blip walk at you that fast, it's always a walker, by the way. Hawks and tanks are snails, basically. See this rock right here? He's my friend. Thank you for letting me peek, rock. Like 
If you get used to hugging rocks, or using cover well I should say, and peeking well, you'll notice fighting bots gets a lot easier. I'll speed this up since I don't get attacked during this objective. Are you enjoying the video? If so, then subbing to the channel would help me out a lot. I plan to do many more of these since there's always something to learn. And of course, if you want any specific content, please let me know. Learning moment number three. I should have rearmed my eagles while doing this objective. I knew I was in for a long run west after it as well, so I had plenty of time. I think I was a bit too worried I'd get attacked, I suppose. I feel I don't rearm them enough manually though. I'm so curious what they're chanting here. Does anyone know? Let me know in the comments, please. Fun fact number six, chanting bots always means they're on the move. Bots standing still don't chant. Speeding up again. I'm sprinting and hugging rocks. That's it, basically. I take out this turret to prevent it from catching me off guard later on. Free win, really. I go for this bunker because it's a guaranteed win. If I get them in time, free samples. And if I don't, then they drop ship and I run past it to the fabricators. Which means they can't drop ship again for a bit. Got them in time, so samples. I didn't grab the bottom ones. I wanted to regain some time. I recommend doing the fabricators and nest next to objectives first. Between stationary enemies, patrols and dropships, you really don't need a fabricator spawning stuff on you as well. Here I'm paying the price for not rearming sooner. No clusters for me. Just gotta survive 30 seconds luckily. Fun fact number 7. Being close to these outposts is safer than being far away. You basically deny them vision of you and you only have to cover two angles. Your left and your right. Assuming you don't get flanked by a patrol of course. If you can climb your way into these, that usually gives you a solid advantage because they're walking out of the main entrance to try and get to you, so you're essentially behind them. I did say usually. Fun fact number 8 is definitely that climbing up and down a rock formation like this is fantastic because they don't know where to go so you're making them chase their own tail. I gave up, so I gave them a 500. The minimap here showed me there were flyer boards incoming, nothing else moves that fast. I couldn't imagine this fire tornado being on the automaton faction. Lesson learned. I just landed a fire here because I know I can stim through it. I want my gear back. I triggered it twice though by accident, so no more stims. I also threw the resupply out of bounds again. That's a horrible habit, don't do that. Map looks really peaceful here, so I'm taking a breather to resupply. I know a lot of people claim soloing a hell dive is easy, but I really don't agree. Like, I mean, if you have perfect aim, that makes up for a lot. But without it, you have to compensate, like, with at least some decent to good strategical decisions. So I hope I'm helping out here, whether you've got your aim or not. The chanting here informs me of a patrol, but the fire tornadoes kind of force my pathing, so I'd like to go in guns blazing, but something tells me I'd regret that decision real fast. Being at the southwest border of the map here is actually ideal. This outpost, being southwest of the objective, is perfect. Like, it's the same story as with the bunker. Best case scenario, I'll wipe out all five bots before they call something in, which gives me room to fall back. And worst case, they drop ship and I run north or northeast, and I get away safely. This objective had two large blips and two or three tiny ones, the tiny ones being more dangerous than the big ones, funny enough. 
because the big ones don't call drop ships. Lock and load. Oh, never mind. Detector first. That thing spots you like at least 200 meters out, and then it starts raining drop ships on you. So if you're ever wondering where all these ships are coming from, you've been detected. Moving forward to remove their vision of me. Unfortunately, I did tap the bot at the objective, so I'm kind of in a pickle here. The 500 I threw at it takes it out, as does an orbital laser. Alternatively, you can drop a hell bomb next, with, for which you don't even have to be inside, by the way. I'll get some footage of that next time. I wanted to go for the objective right away here, but this place is filled with enemies. So, proud moment number two. I threw the cluster here, and normally you'd run away from it immediately, but doing that would probably get me killed because of all the things in there. So I stayed close to the wall and waited for the cluster timer to almost finish before I booked it. Finishing stragglers to prevent dropships, and I love tapping the tiny bots with the diligence. Avoiding fire tornadoes with a passion, because they're basically elemental bullies. Fun fact number 9, these walkers have more armor at the top than they do at the quotation marks waist. So shoot them from the waist down. I'm speeding this up. Nothing happens other than me dying to a fire tornado again. I just keep underestimating the range and damage to these things. Here it's evident how dangerous the fire tornadoes actually are. Like I would normally just try to get to the generator lever for the next objective step. But I actually can't get to it because of the tornadoes. So I guess guns be blazing. Since everything's heard me, may as well leave out the back door. I love explosive resistance so much. I throw the resupply left at the generator here, so I'm sure I can get it after I pull the lever, even if anything blasts me from the right. Fun fact number 10. The auto cannon magazines carry 10 bullets, but they reload per 5. So I shot one into the air here, so I get an extra 4 bullets from the resupply. Hashtag efficiency. Open fields like this give me the creeps against the automatons. If you get hit by a patrol, or worse, they just spawn on you. It's basically a baitball session and you're wearing a rabbit suit. Good luck with that crap. I was gonna run north here, but the dropship changed my plans. Running east here to avoid the dropship. I know where the super samples are now though, so if anyone joins I'll go back for them. I suppose fun fact number 11 is that samples cap at 500, 250 and 100 respectively. So anything you collect after that goes in the trash. I know a lot of people dislike the caps, but I don't though. I think it's a great way to make sure new content stays fun, even for people like me who play this game way too much. And the caps make it feel like I kind of finished the game at some point as well. That's my philosophy on it though. Optimism makes happy I'd say. I already decided not to full clear, but these two outposts are super close to me. And the XP it contributes to the liberation of the planet, so for democracy, baby. Whenever I see more red blips on the minimap than I can count in a second, that's basically them begging for a cluster bomb. So sweet that thing is angled towards me. Thanks, RNG.
I guess you can win without the high ground. You was wrong, Obi. Hashtag movie reference. So there's a bunch of dudes on my left here, but I have four stims and confidence on my side, so I'm running straight for that fabricator. I swear these sword guys appear like a horror movie villain. Come on. See, there's spots north, west, and south of me. So that's me east, basically. You can definitely fight them, but the time investment is usually not worth it. In a squad? I'm a madman though. Like, if I know we're making good pace, I'll be real. Those bots are gonna get some. When there's just one tank, you can run circles around it forever, by the way. Not that scary on their own. Never forget the tank explodes twice after you kill it. Only the second explosion does damage them. Chose my route here, so I'm booking it to get as many objectives as I can. I also got a manual rearm in here. Shot some dudes, grabbed some ammo, the usual. I didn't think I could get the auto cannon bullet to bounce in at this angle, but I was wrong, which is nice. This is probably as angled as I can get it though. I'm not sure. Just some more running here. Avoiding patrols as much as I can to save time again. I get spotted though and they drop ship, but I just keep running for the next outpost, so it's fine. I recommend always taking these turret guys out from a distance when you have a good position. Reason number one being they will blast you if you didn't notice them. And reason number two is probably more important. You probably won't trigger a dropship when you take them out. They'll just start running outside to investigate, by which point you'll be long gone. So take them out, but don't stay put. And if they do dropship, well, you can either back off or you fight them from a pretty good position. Fun fact number 12, I take out tower turrets so I don't get surprised by them, but you can actually use them to friendly fire just about anything from fabricators to hulks, all with good movement and positioning, but those are desperate times to be fair. I'm angled correctly to take out those fabricators, but the vision is absolutely killing me, so I don't want to peek and randomly get blasted by lasers and rockets. I decide to fall back and get a bit of a better angle and a safer position. Reading the terrain on your minimap is also an awesome skill to practice. Running around a rock like this is much more useful than it looks. If anything was following you, it'll probably lose you halfway around the rock. And obviously you reposition, so now you can peek without them knowing where you are. Caught that bot like Mr. Miyagi catches flies with chopsticks. Oh yeah. Movie <laughs> reference number two. I have no idea why none of those landed. I guess my aim got bad again. I'm just gonna go for the main objective here. I don't feel like fighting three fabricators, two dropships, and fire tornadoes with 12 and a half minutes on the clock. Hashtag priorities. I hope I'm proving that good decision making can make all the difference. And I hope you're still enjoying the video if you're this far in. I'd argue the hot planets have the most annoying planetary effects. Stamina draining so fast sucks. Like, I'll take an Ion Storm any day. I 
I throw a laser in here because I have two left and the mission is almost over. And I know it'll get at least two fabricators. I found out there's only two left though, so it cleared it for me. Sweet. I thought there was still a third one, but I miscounted. It goes to show how good the laser can be. Makes sense you only get three uses, to be fair. Getting to know your missions is also invaluable information. The launch code objective in an ICBM is a snatch and grab. So I don't have to be as careful here because I don't have to stick around. Running straight for the ICBM here and zigzagging with rhythm, of course. Zigzag too fast and you catch a bullet or a rocket or both. My main map gave me that bot's position. My overconfidence gave them mine. This is probably where I confess that I believe the ICBM is the easiest mission to solo. For some reason the main objective rarely has any fighting. I don't know if it's bugged or designed that way though. So if you ever feel like soloing, or even in team play, don't be afraid to go for the main objective alone here. Fun fact number 13. On the main objective of an ICBM, after you trigger the console, you can already interact with the latches. You don't actually have to be on the console step to do it. Information for maximum efficiency when playing solo, but even better info when in a squad. I'm 33 and I've been gaming for over 20 years. This game feels amazing to me. The amount of strategy you can implement, both solo and in group play, is amazing. I played Magicka, another Arrowhead Studios game, where I absolutely love the cooperation aspect as well. Maybe the only game that comes close to this is Deep Rock Galactic. Hopefully they don't mess up a good thing here. Even with all the bugs, I'm willing to wait it out. There seems to be so much more good than bad. Or maybe that's just my optimism. If I can get you to answer any of my questions in the comment section below, I hope it's this one. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much are you enjoying this game anyway? It's a rock solid 9 for me. Remove the bugs and I'd say a 10. Since we're just sitting here, I guess I'll hit you with another medical slash ICU nurse fact. So, fun fact number 14. Did you know you can practice and get good at just about anything you set your mind to? Your brain will actually anatomically, so physically, change to accommodate whatever it is you're trying to rock at. Isn't that awesome? So get to it! Okay, enough chit chat. I'm speeding this up because this objective is boring as crap. Every time you take out a stationary outpost like this, keep your eye out for the flare gunner. They can all flare, but if you mentally prep for it, you might be able to flick your gun at it and stop the dropship altogether. Like that. See? Clearing as much as I can here as usual, so I can get to the fabricators. Unfortunately, that triggered a bunch of crap though. I was playing too hastily. I should have shot that guy from further away. Would have prevented that dropship. Well, good a time as any for my last laser. The two dead tower turrets means the two fabricators, which are between the two turrets, will definitely die to the laser. I tried to get this Hulk here. That was just arrogant. I got lucky, but there were so many machine gunners. I should have died there, honestly. I'll live to fight another day, boys. My hell divers are absolute kings at mantling anything and everything for no reason whatsoever. Just trying to get out of their line of sight here, but they want my ass so bad. Before you shoot these jetpack guys, make sure to always dive away from them before you pull the trigger so they don't kamikaze bomb you. They dropshipped in the base I lasered a minute ago, so the dropship should be on cooldown. I think it's like 2 minutes or something. I'm sure someone knows the actual timer, but that knowledge lets me go in freely here basically. I'm heading for extraction soon, so I'm maximizing this resupply. Reloading everything basically. So I realize here I only missed one sub-objective, but I guess I'm happy I got everything else though. We'll try again next time. I 
cluster bomb here because there's a lot of guys. You know the drop. If they drop ship, that means I don't get drop ship at extraction for a bit. And if they don't, well, free loot. Fun fact number 15, by the way. If you're prone and out of line of sight, so they don't have vision of you at all, when you throw the stratagem, they don't actually know where it came from, so they don't aggro. Good intel in case you like the stealth playstyle. Works on bugs as well. Fun fact number 16 then is probably that in a team, everyone has to be prone and out of line of sight for it to work. But it does work, and that also means you can throw 4 stratagems without them moving or aggroing. I'll speed up the extraction here. Just shooting stuff en route, Pelican 1. So, finally getting to the end here. Same stuff you've been seeing, really. In short, 1. Check your minimap often, count your foes. 2. Hug rocks. 3. Peek well, only as much as you need to, to see something, basically. 4. Nail them. Remember, not everything you hide behind will protect you well. A lot of things can get destroyed. This pillar can't though, so keep that in mind when finding cover. This last death is basically slapstick comedy. I auto climb the crate by accident, then I accidentally slide out of cover. And this one guy, just this one devastator, punishes me for not listening to my own lessons for half a second. Game's amazing, man. No sarcasm, of course. The fact that it can be so brutal is great. Gives you something to be proud of when you play well. Coming back to what I said earlier, if someone had joined, I would have put in the effort to get the super samples. I also wouldn't have uploaded this video because it would have been a dual hell dive. But I prefer just redoing a run over kicking someone out. Like I said, take care of your fellow hell divers. It's worth it. And just in case you're watching this thinking, no way in hell am I ever pulling this off. I failed soloing hell dives an insane amount of times. I lost count, to be honest. So you can definitely do it. It just requires two things. One, you need to have fun while doing it. And the only reason you need to have fun is that because, two, practice is gonna make perfect. And without fun, you're gonna hate practicing. I guess I'll leave you with an awesome quote I read recently. You know what it's called when you're grinding for something you absolutely hate? It's called stress. You know what it's called when you're grinding for something you absolutely love? It's called passion. Remember that while you're grinding next time. It helps. Enjoy the journey. Good luck. So closing in on the end of the video, I really hope you enjoyed it, and if not, well, thank you for sticking with me till the end at least. I genuinely appreciate that. I'm new to video editing, so I'd love any and all feedback you have. Even if you think it might be brutal, taking the time to help me learn and grow would be amazing. If not, I get your time is valuable as well, of course. I'm also going to do my best to make shorts, and will try to tap into as many viewer requests as I can. So, guides, or more runs like these, or specific team loadouts, anything basically. I uploaded a short at the same time as this video, which has nothing to do with combat, <laughs> but I'll give you a hint. I got over 13 million points, and I had a keyboard camera on to prove the legitimacy as well, just to be safe. I hope you guys enjoy that also. As all YouTubers request, if you're looking to crank up the oxytocin in your body, please leave a like and subscribe. Hopefully catch you next time. Be well, take care. The victory for democracy.